I want to analyze a couple of images just by way of example, in fact, three images, and um, they're all the same and they're all totally different. They're all referring to the same thing, uh, but they're totally different in some interesting kinds of ways. So, and they're all train pictures. So three train pictures. So here's the first train picture. And this is a photograph um, taken a little while ago in the era when there were still steam trains in the world. Um, and uh, there are three kids there who are sitting on their school bags waiting for the school bus and this train's going past. So it's a kind of a, 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 a you know, quasi-romantic kind of picture of an era that's gone when there were steam trains and a very cold winter's day and so on. So what are we referring to? Let's take our five questions. Um, we're referring to this phenomenon of a train. It's on the edge of a town um, uh, that's crossing a level crossing, it's crossing the road. Um, Dialogical, what is the relationship of the viewer and the photographer to the children and the train? Well, the answer is the children are sort of semi not aware that the photographer exists. They're watching the train. We're following their eye lines. It's of interest to us, it's of interest to them, and we don't have a direct relationship with them. So in terms of things that we do in language with first person and second person and interpersonal relationships, this image is framing those things. Um, structure. Let, let's go on to the next point. Well, the image is framed, um, the children are in the middle, they're in the foreground, uh, the train's in the background. So there's a set of things, compositional elements there with this, uh, this, particular, this particular image. So what do we do now uh, in relation to context? Well, what's outside the image? Well, look, it looks like it's kind of, it's on the edge of an industrial town. In fact, there's another piece of smoke you can see going in the other direction across the screen. In fact, that's the factory. This is a cement factory where this train's going to. That's the factory. It's not in the image, but it's part of the context. There's, there's, there's a town on the other side. Also not in the image, uh, but part of the context is the fact that there's a school. This is probably in the morning. These kids are going to school. And what's the purpose of the image? Well, the purpose of the image is um, you know, about this nonchalantly waiting for school, this era when there were steam trains. There's a whole lot of intentions that are going on in that image. Let's stay with trains, and here's another different train image. So, this is one of the classic um, design pieces, visual design pieces of the 20th century, but it's been modified in a really funny, interesting way. So, uh, the London transport map um, is a way of building a conceptual map of how to get around London on the underground. Um, it's very famous and it, uh, the logo's famous. Everything about this imagery is famous for its clarity, its simplicity. The little dots are where you change trains. You're on lines which are color coded. And of course, London, you can see the River Thames going through the middle of the picture. But London, in reality, the River Thames doesn't have neat corners like that, and the railway lines don't have straight lines like this. It's a map which conceptualizes travel abstractly in a way which is different from the actual, you know, usefully different in the way, um, in, uh, from the ways in which the actual space of London is laid out. But uh, rather, this is a, a new version of this map, which is very, very cute. You can see between each of the, um, the stations, there's actually a little, uh, a little number, which is this, the walking time between the stations. So one of the things about you know, being on a train like this is, um, you know, you don't, you can't, you know, it's in the dark, it's underground, you can't see where you're going. Uh, you're not quite sure how far it is. And by saying, look, if you actually got out and walked this, it'd be seven minutes. It's actually telling you not to get the train because it's another piece of information which is being put there. Um, and it's also telling you something very simply. If you were up on the street, you don't really know that it's seven, well, if you had your phone, you'd know, but this map wouldn't tell you that it's seven minutes and don't bother getting the train because you could walk it quicker than waiting for a train. So again, what's, what, are the, what are the features of this map? Well, firstly, it refers to train things, which is stations and places, the same way the previous image referred to train things. Uh, it refers to um, uh, the London Underground, but in this abstract conceptual kind of way. So it's a visual representation which operates at a kind of level of generality and abstraction, which is useful in terms of planning your itinerary. You know, so we can go through each of these five questions. The structure of it, um, it's a quite beautiful, elegant structure in terms of the way in which the whole of a huge cities, huge underground is, is represented on one very simple map. So it's structured in these particular ways with the key down the side, which, you know, it's a very, very explicit structure to facilitate an easy reading path for a particular user. Um, and, um, and the context is 
this other world which actually in reality looks very different. So there's a context which is, you know, you could get some pictures of London in your head now and you can say that London doesn't look like this at all. And the intention is not just around getting the train, the intention is actually around not getting the train uh, in some funny kinds of ways. So if we can actually ask these five questions, it helps us deconstruct the visual grammar of this particular uh, train picture. So a third train picture. So here we've got um, uh, an image from a train book called The City of New Orleans. So The City of New Orleans is a train which it runs from Chicago to New Orleans, and it's a book for children. Good morning, America. How are you? Uh, say, uh, say you don't know me, uh, I'm your native son, I'm the train they call the city of New Orleans, I'll be gone 500 miles when the day is done. Personifying the train. So what we're doing is we're um, uh, doing a classic literary thing, except in this point with an image, we're putting a caption on a train and that train then becomes a person, which is part of the lifeblood of America and so on. So if we go through our analysis, what are we referring to? We're referring to this train of great, of you know, historic significance, Chicago to New Orleans, um, um, where, um, uh, where there's all there's kinds of interpersonal dialogue being constructed. I'm, as a viewer, relating to the people coming off the train, um, but I'm also relating to the train as a person, um, so, and I'm being constructed that way. So that's the, uh, the business of dialogue. Dialogue's being framed in this, in this image. Um, when it comes to structure, we've got a particular grammar around the writing at the top, the image on the page, particular type of medium being used um, for, for drawing the image um, in these kinds of ways. When we get to uh, context, the context is a whole historical context and an aura around what this train means. Um, and when we get to uh, intention, to intend or purpose, um, it's a kind of a literary thing, young children's writing, um, and it's meant to evoke a whole set of auras. So the, the, it's a deeply uh, humanly drenched uh, story uh, full of uh, human intention of one sort or another, and the and the 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 intentions, you know. Then the relationship with the reader. What if the young person's never been on a train, which a lot of young people may not have? Um, what does this particular story mean? How is it interpreted? What are they? What's their relationship to this text? Is also in that space. So here we've got a multimodal text um, where we're um, uh, you know we, we, we're deconstructing using this grammar of multimodality uh, around, we're deconstructing the way in which that image works and what it does.